Welcome back to The Right Routine, your writing partner in the Motherhood Balancing Act, Episode 3. I'm so glad you're here with me. Last week's SMART goal for me was actually more than a week ago. I made the goal to dictate for five minutes daily for a total of 30 minutes while I was playing with my son in the mornings and while he was most tranquil and easily entertained. I also had the goal to say a prayer before dictating. This did not happen. I had a new baby. Yay! And I've been trying to adjust to wrangling two babies at once instead of just one. I've had a really hard time trying to, well, getting my hormones back to normal and um, being able to concentrate enough to start writing again because, I don't know, giving birth is hard work mental work too. Anyway, I've started getting back on track. Last week I began dictating again after about a month and a half of doing nothing. Well, I was doing a lot of things. I just wasn't writing. I managed to dictate for 61 minutes over the course of four days and I did it while I was playing outside in the afternoons with my son, not in the mornings. Uh, I haven't been very consistent with the timing. I'm still working on that, but I'm not, I'm trying not to be discouraged about it because it is progress and it is a new habit and those take time, you know, and it's a lot of adjustment that I'm going through. So I kind of reached the goal, not really. I did make progress though, so that's, that's good, even though it only took me a month and a half to start again. (laughs) All right, today I want to talk about writer's block. I have some strong opinions about writer's block and some pet peeves about... When I hear that word, sometimes it just irks me. We'll go into that. ChatGPT says that writer's block is a psychological phenomenon characterized by a temporary inability to generate new ideas or to continue writing despite the desire and motivation to do so. It is a creative block that affects writers, often leaving them stuck or unable to progress with their writing projects. Writer's block can manifest in various forms, such as, number one, lack of inspiration. Writers may feel a lack of ideas or struggle to find creative inspiration to start or continue writing. Today's episode doesn't really help with that. Number two, difficulty in expressing ideas. Writers may have trouble putting their thoughts into words or forming coherent sentences. Today's episode doesn't help with that a whole lot either. Number three, fear of failure or judgment. A fear of not meeting personal expectations or fearing criticism from others can hinder the writing process. I don't really go into that, but I will say that your expectations of your books, the first drafts are going to be terrible, and that's okay. Expect that they will be horrible and that you will hate them. If you fear criticism from others for your first draft, I suggest you don't share your first draft. Wait till you can go through and make it a little pretty and share your second draft with others if that's the problem. But maybe those are (laughs) solutions that are too simple. That's what I do. I have a hard time sharing my first draft because I hate the first draft. They're horrible. Number four, self-doubt. Writers may question their own abilities or the value of their work, leading to a loss of confidence. I don't really help you with that today either. Hmm. (laughs) Moving on, number five, perfectionism. An obsession with creating a perfect piece of writing can lead to feelings of frustration and inability to move forward. Yeah, I go into that. Number six, overwhelm. Facing a large project or tight deadlines can be overwhelming, leading to a feeling of being stuck and unable to progress. Yes, I kind of go into that, but I am assuming, full disclosure, in this episode that you are working on a first draft of a book that you're not yet being paid to write, so you don't have a publisher, you don't have an agent putting pressure on you, is what I'm assuming, and you're trying to get through the first draft. I think I already said that. So those are the solutions that I'll be going into today, if that happens to be your problem. If you're struggling with perfectionism, 
is mostly the thing I'm going into. Writer's block is a common experience among writers, continues this definition, regardless of their level of expertise or the type of writing they engage in. It can be a frustrating and discouraging phase, but it is generally considered a natural part of the creative process. Okay. I um, am going to go into my own pet peeves now with regards to writer's block. I despise when people say, oh, I'm a writer, but I haven't written anything because I have writer's block. Or, oh, I'm going to be a published author and make so much money. I'm going to be a millionaire someday. And then I ask, oh, okay, cool. So how many books have you written? Oh, none. I'm blocked right now. Oh, how, how long have you been, you know, blocked? Oh, a few years. And it's just, <laughs> oh, just drives me up the wall. Um, so writer's block is not a badge of authenticity. All writers have it. Good writers have it. Bad writers have it. Okay, just because you're experiencing a block does not, it, I don't know, it doesn't make you cool. <laughs> That's all I want to say. And I don't know. You stay-at-home moms probably didn't think it did. It, I don't know. I guess these are traumas from my youth. Moving on. It is not a valid long-term excuse. If you're blocked for a long time, like for a year, for a month, you got to change something up. Something's wrong. <laughs> and like, it's not... Ah. Writer's block is not a valid excuse. It's not a valid excuse because a block isn't an inability to move forward. It's a difficulty moving forward. And there are things you can do to get past a block. Blocks are normal. They're everywhere. You're going to run into a bunch of them. It's perfectly normal. But you have to get past them if you want to finish writing your book. So especially for moms, you moms out there, you can't afford to cling to a block. You have to get past it if you want to get your book finished because you and I both know you don't have a lot of time <laughs> on your hands to spend sitting at a block. You have to get past it. They are not for carrying. They are milestones. You run into a block and you get to assess your progress, the direction you're going in, make a few course adjustments, and then you plow through it and move on. You will get past it. And then you can run into another one. And that's another process. And it's great. Every block you hit is progress you're making. So a writer's block is real, but it's only as powerful as you allow it to be. It's basically what I want to say about that. I would love to know what you guys think. Um, please follow me on Instagram at astrojoel. Uh, if you have... I don't know, if, if you disagree with me, I'd love to know. Make a post about it and use the hashtag the right routine. I want to know what you think. Uh, you can DM me on Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about writer's block. I really, I really want to know what you guys are thinking. And this episode is kind of hard because I, I wish I could talk to someone about it. I wish it could be more of a discussion instead of me just spouting out everything. So... I'd love to know what you, what you think, what you have to say. I want to know. Let me know what your experiences with writer's block are, your advice for getting past a block, and also let me know your smart goal for the week. So I always find it helpful to tell someone about a goal of mine. It helps me to keep track of my progress. It keeps me accountable, which is why I tell you guys about my goal. <laughs> All right, let's talk about getting past a block. These are things that I've done, and I hope they'll be useful to you if you're out of block right now. Last episode, I talked about writing methods. There's The ones I talked about are writing by hand, typing on a computer, and dictating. So if you hit a block, you can always switch the writing method. You don't have to do that for the rest of the book. It could just be for a scene. Or if you are using a method that you like using, try these little changes instead. If you're writing by hand, and I mentioned this in the last episode, focus on making your handwriting beautiful. And don't focus on the words you're writing, just make the writing look good. That helps me a lot. 
if you are dictating, it's helpful to close your eyes. Um, it helps me not to get distracted or to dictate somewhere new. I have found that dictating outside instead of in the playroom has been very helpful. I There's fresh air. There's a breeze that comes through. I can watch my son running around and fighting rocks. And it's just, I feel like I'm productive. I feel like I'm not so closed in. It's useful. Try it. If you're typing, this is such a weird, <laughs> this is a weird little hack, you could say. Just change the font you're typing in. There's, if you follow um, AuthorTube, there's, there's a lot of authors who make videos on YouTube. And I've seen there's, it's a thing, a uh, Comic Sans hack, where you write using the font Comic Sans and you, I don't, it, it just helps you not to be such a perfectionist and it helps you to get you through your first draft. I've tried it, it has helped me. Um, I don't know. See if it works for you. See if there's a different font you like better. Switch it up. Why not? Another thing to change apart from writing methods is to listen to music. Sometimes that helps. There's also ambiance writing videos you can listen to. Like you can look up on YouTube. Writer's ambiance library or treehouse or forest there's a whole bunch and they just have different sounds and it's kind of quiet those are fun to listen to but i find i get distracted with them sometimes i listen sometimes i don't uh, if you listen to music try listening to different music for this scene for the scene you're stuck on or try not listening to music at all for the scene you're stuck on just switch it up um another thing to do just to get past the scene is set a timer for five minutes and in those five minutes you have to write the entire scene this works better if um, you're typing or dictating because handwriting is slower but i'm sure you could do it with handwriting maybe just give yourself a little more time give yourself five minutes and by the end of those five minutes you have to be finished with the scene it's done and you're you can't go back and change it you can't add anymore and just having that mentality can pull me past the the difficulties I'm having, the little blocks I'm stuck at. Another idea is to just skip the scene altogether and move on. That's an easy one. Sometimes it's the right answer. If you're skipping every scene, then obviously there's something wrong with the story. <laughs> um, I'll go into that in a, li in a little bit. But yeah, sometimes you just have to just skip the scene and move on to bigger and better things. The last piece of advice here that I want to give is to write the scene badly, as bad as you can. Uh, use telling. Don't show anything. Just tell everything. Make it boring. Misspell stuff if you want to. Just have fun with it. Just make it bad and get it done so you can move on. And then you can go back and finish it once the first draft is all done. Now, going back to if something is wrong with the scene or if you're skipping everything and it's just not working out, maybe you need to question the scene's value. This is, hmm, I often have little blocks that those, that the advice I gave you can help me to get over. Sometimes it's a bigger one where I keep going through the scene. I use some of the other tactics and it just does not feel good. I'm just not enjoying it. The story is more embarrassing than usual. I'm just having a hard, hard time. And I realize that there's something wrong with the scene. And that's why it feels wrong is because the scene is wrong. And either there's a, a problem with the plot point that I'm trying to write around, or there's no relevant character development. I'm just saying stuff that doesn't need to be said and it's not advancing the story or the character, or there's no relevant conflict. Everything's sunshine and daisies, and that's why it's boring, and that's why it feels wrong. So I have learned that 
If I keep having a hard time with the scene after trying different things to get past it, to get through it, I need to try writing it from a different perspective. Now, I really want your guys' input on what I'm about to say because maybe it's not true. But I think it's true that if a scene, if you have more than two characters in a scene, right? If the scene is boring or if the scene is only interesting from one of their perspectives, then something's wrong with the scene. Something's wrong with it. It should be interesting from both perspectives. So if you're struggling to write one, write it from the other perspective, and that might help you to figure out, oh, the character I was trying to write from, their motivation was wrong. Or, oh, I wasn't showing this. And it can help you to get past whatever the problem is and identify what you need to change in your second draft later on. So that's that's my biggest piece of advice is change the perspective you're writing from. And if you're doing a first per, first person book, you can still change the perspective in this first draft for this scene. Later on, you can change it back. The first draft is the terrible draft. Let it be inconsistent. Let it be bad. Just get it done. Um, and then the golden rule of getting past blocks is once you write something or once you decide, oh, I actually don't need that character, or oh, maybe I should have that character be here the whole time instead of where I had them. I'll just write them in for this scene. Don't go back and change what you already wrote. Do not do it. You'll remember in the second draft that you have to change things, okay? Change it now. Pretend it as if the whole thing has been written that way and move forward with the change in place. The second draft is for making things better. The first draft just has to be plowed through. It's a vomit draft. Let it be bad. Okay? That's my golden rule. Here is my new smart goal for the week. And that little <laughs> spiel, that, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a bit of a spiel. That's, I guess, the lesson for this week. I hope it was useful. <laughs> um, let me know if it was or wasn't. My new smart goal for the week is to dictate for eight minutes, Monday through Saturday, while playing with my son outside in the afternoons. And I'm going to make an Instagram post afterwards to let you guys know what I'm up to. It helps me to keep accountable a lot. Helps a lot. More than anything else I've tried. I've tried having um, like magnets that I get to put on a board when I write. I've tried keeping a tally and this has been the most helpful is knowing, okay, I have to make, I have to make a video about whether I did it or not. So if that sounds helpful to you, please try it and use the hashtag, um, the right routine so I can watch and see, so I can know what your goals are. So I can know how you guys are progressing. Cause I want to know, um, the challenges I can foresee coming up this week are keeping my device safe from my son who wants to press the buttons. And remembering what I've already dictated and what comes next. But I'm trying, I'm figuring out some uh, tricks for that. Maybe we'll talk about those later in a different episode. So that's what I'm going to be doing this coming week. And the inspiration that I want to share with you is a quote that I found a while ago when I was doing school for something. I don't remember what class it was, but it was a business class. And the quote was, successful people are those who keep working when it's hard. And mothers, I know things are hard. And I know some days you just don't get a around to writing. Some days you're just trying to keep <laughs> your children alive and yourself alive. And that's okay. Uh, I think the most important thing is to keep moving forward. And if you can only write for one minute that day, fine. If you can't write at all that day, but you can write for a minute the next day, great. Just keep moving through the difficulty. You don't have to write a lot. You can just write one sentence. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, we can do it, ladies. We can, we can reach our writing goals. 
Let's make relevant and achievable goals and do a little bit every day and get our books written. I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'd love for you to DM me your goals through Instagram um, at AstroJoel, A-S-T-E-R-J-O-W-E-L-L. Uh, or you can make a video about your writer's block experiences or your goals. Leave a comment here on YouTube if that's where you're watching this from. I'd love to know what you think. And remember, writer's blocks are not weights to carry in your backpack or blocks to sit on. you got to keep hiking through your book. They're milestones. Have a great week. Thanks for listening. Bye.